so when you look at these projects that Richard's created, tell me which one is your favorite and why is it your favorite? Because they're all super <clears throat> badass. We have Hex, which is the first CD and you're getting interest earned for staking. We have the level one protocol, which is its own blockchain, Pulse Chain, mm -hmm. and Pulse Coin. The incentive is that anyone on Pulse Chain is going to have to buy gas and use it for transaction fees. So it's almost forced to go up over time. Then we have mm -hmm. the Pulse X, which is its own DEX, and we're going to mm -hmm. have this this token that we get for staking. Tell me, tell me in your in your game theory mind, because re remember when you're staring at those statistics screens on video games and you're trying to yeah. find all the best ones, when you use your high level brain on that, what do you come up with for your favorite and what are a couple reasons why? Well, I, firstly, I think like Hex, um, I'm not gonna say that's my favorite, but what did Hex have going for it that made it work so well? Well, no one is incentivized to basically put a lot of liquidity and so that means because you were able to earn trustless interest with no impermanent loss risk it was like the dream it was like you can have your coin go up in value while getting more of those coins in from the inflation and so if you're an average length average size staker you are actually never getting diluted and so that was kind of like a way to not get diluted but also get paid um and you know without having to risk uh you know, in a liquidity pool, you can get paid in fees and stuff, but you can miss out on potential gains. Whereas in Hex, you get like all of it in one. Um, so that was like really crazy cool uh, when that first came out. And it's not, and it's still great. And then, you know, Pulse Chain, it's got, it's got like, you can just look at every other layer one and you can see the performance and you're like, well, if this is anything like that, it's likely to do very well. So that just, you're just immediately, you can look, you can just look at charts of similar stuff. Same for Dex coins. They did relatively well. Um, there's like, we're not copying anything that just went to zero. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> so, so we're looking at what's done really well. And then we're like, let's change just this little bit. You know, we're not going to like reinvent the wheel because no one ever does that in crypto. If they do, it usually ends up with a hack and they're like, oh, whoops. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that. I want to look at the tried and true stuff and you change like a parameter of stuff that's been audited and already been tried out and we've seen it working for like a year and a half or something and so now that like hex has been working for two years or more that's been uh basically tried and true so early on it was some new stuff but now the most of the risk is gone it's worked for two years no problem so people can be even more confident buying it now of course the reward is less because it has less ability to appreciate than before um but it's still an awesome deal now, Pulse Chain compared to PulseX, in my opinion, I think PulseX just, it just ha has everything, like everything you'd want. So you know how we were talking about the liquidity of Hex and how it's low and that helps for price ap appreciation because you don't need as many dollars to push the price up. You know, in a USDC Hex pair, if there's 10 million USDC on one side and whatever $10 million worth of Hex is on the other side, if you put in 10 more million of USDC, you 4X the Hex price. Wow. So like <laughs> I was getting the text. Um, so like in that like only like a year ago, there was only like three to six million dollars of liquidity in um in hex. And so it was like, okay, how hard is it to find three million in <laughs> three million in uh, crypto guys? It's not hard. Not hard. And so basically, as anybody found out about it, the price was just like, wow, there's like <laughs> there's nothing between us and going like a hundred X. So, and so we still relatively we don't need that much uh dollars to push the price of hex up and a lot of the supply of potential sellers is into the future you won't even see it so they don't can't even sell if they wanted to um but pulse you know you don't have any lockup feature uh you can delegate your stuff and that's cool uh you can earn more of it but the problem is they have a lot of liquidity at the start, a lot of percent of the supply. Like I, I'm not gonna go into the math figures because without seeing it on screen, it's not that great. I think I have a video on it um, already, but around nine to 18% of the user owned supply is gonna be in the liquidity pools at the start as compared to like Hex, which I believe has 0.22% wow. of its, of its uh, user-owned supply. So this is already discounting OA and stuff. 
Um, and so it's like, whoa. So that is going to take a lot more potential dollars to remove that, uh, you know, pulse and stuff. Be basically, because if you, even if we're just going by dollar terms, for pulse, um, it has everyone who sacrificed, like the average sacrificer paid 10,000th of a dollar per pulse. And so I don't think anyone wants to immediately lock in a loss day one. I don't know about anybody who's doing that. So if it's anything like the ETH ICO, it's probably going to launch at like a 10X or something and then never drop below and then go up forever, like 50X in the next six months. That's what, that's what Ethereum did. And if you look at it, this is, they had a very similar launch to how ours is. They had, a, they had basically this phase where you had a, the best rate for a few days. And then it was, oh, ratcheting up worse rate. And it's exactly what ours is. And that's how theirs performed. So at very, I think that's maybe where Richard got the idea to like, hey, they never drop below what these people, you know, sacrifice for. And they sacrificed BTC for ETH at the time. And uh, so I, I don't see why people would lock in any sort of loss. And I don't think any whales are going to let people, other whales come in and buy cheaper pulse than they got from sacrificing. And they have, we know they have hundreds of thousands of Ethereum to back up, back it up. So I don't see anyone being down uh, at the start of this. It's different from the hex launch. I'm, man, I'm go, I got like eight tangents going on right now. That's but okay. um, the, <laughs> the, the hex launch was, uh, you know, some people were like, well, why didn't he do, you know, adoption amplifier over a year for Pulse Chain and Pulse X? And it's like, well, it didn't look so great on the chart if you look at it. Whenever you're releasing in, in crazy inflation every day, when you go from a billion coins to 1.5 billion coins, you just increase the supply by 50% the second day. Yeah. Because um, the first day there was 1 billion and then there was 500 million. And basically you're, there's just hyperinflation. Like how are you supposed to keep up with almost doubling coins every few days, you know? And so there was a big sell off until there, you know, then there was that capitulation bottom and then it was up. But I don't think we have that same problem with ours because it's immediately everybody has their coins at basically the price that they paid. And so unless you want to lock in a loss and then get left behind by these whales buying it up, uh, I don't know who is going to sell below that starting price. And so I think we're just going to launch at a way higher price um, than we paid, which is pretty sweet because I, I, I haven't heard any arguments to like why we would ever drop below. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know?